the UK small fleet contribute to the coastal economy. In the winter time, when no one's here, we're still buying diesel. We're still paying welders. People can still buy fresh fish. If we're not around, those coastal communities will suffer. Um, and, and equally, it's nice to see a fishing boat. When people go to the, to the harbour, they want to see a fishing boat tied up. And, you know, it's part of our heritage and it should be looked after. Fishing vessel Sarah, through this is Stolen Coast Guard, you are weak but readable, channel 6-7, over. Uh, Solon Coast Guard, fishing vessel Sarah C, many thanks, uh, Sarah C, listening out. Fishing vessel Sarah C, you are weak but readable, channel 6-7, over. So it's Chantelle and Peter Williams for nine o'clock session. Yep, and that's definitely to do quotas and to talk about the discard ban, isn't it? Perfect, that's great. Thank you very much, Jane. Yeah, we've got, we've got a position at the minute in this country where the, the, the UK vessels that fish in the under 10 fleet, um, there are over 2,000 vessels, which sounds a lot, but most of, them, most of these vessels are um, my size vessel and smaller. And we've got 4% of the UK annual quota given to us by Europe to fish with. And that's got to be shared between over 2,000 boats. probably spend um, in general about um, 10 maybe 14 hours a day uh, working on stuff for Pete. It could be anything from driving his fish to market to delivering the fish to our local buyers. Paperwork for quotas, it was more of a choice to actually help Peter with his business. Um, I don't know anybody or any fisherman who, to be honest, could do everything that needs doing. Walking tomorrow, providing the weather settles. It's 30 mile an hour winds, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, a while for the weather. So, yeah, so know I don't got. know what, what do you need? Um, Anything, or are you all right? <laughs> some more bass. Some more Miracles bass. may um, happen. Maybe a couple of skate. As well. Okay, alright then. Um, it any, won't be. Anything different? Earliest tomorrow. very little waste. The only waste is because we haven't got quota for it. You know, um, place have got a high survival rate. Anything like that can go back, skate, things like that. But it kind of makes it pointless coming out here if you're throwing half your fish back. You know, that's the, that, that's the issue. It's not that we, we want to keep everything and we want extra quota to keep everything. We just want to be able to run the business effectively. If you went to work every day and threw away half the paperwork you did. You might as well only go part time. It seems crazy that there's foreign boats that can come and fish for as much as they want without, with very little restriction. Yet I'm fishing for it sustainably and, 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 and looking after the fish that we catch and bringing it in fresh, but we're having to throw back you know, it's not even big amounts that we're being given as quotas, it's some tiny amounts. You know, a, an angler could catch 100 kilos of place in a month. If, you, if one of those big boats that have got the majority of the quota went out and put the trawl in, they'd be over quota within 10 minutes. So, you've got to, got to question how are they getting so much quota and if, if we're fishing the way we are, why aren't we given a fair share of it? As you can see, that everything's alive, fresh. Hiya. Um, 
Yeah, traditional foods um, want some, well it depends what you've got, if you've got some bass and some place and some cod, um, they want some of that um, and whatever else you've got. Okay, um, how much place have you got? Are we near, near quota? Okay, um, we've got about 50 kilos of place probably left anyway. Uh, but you only got those species? Yes. Yeah. I'll take and, and two more cod. Yes. So it's pretty windy outside, isn't it? Yeah, it's blowing a past five to seven. It can be quite interesting on a, on a windy day. There's a little bit of groundswell here today, so we'll, uh, we should start lifting up and down a little bit as we go out. I mean, obviously I work out here on my own. Um, I try and keep the boat nice and tidy and clean and keep everything out of the way because obviously if anything happens, there's only myself to use the radio to call anyone, myself to fire a flare to alert anyone, myself to launch the life raft to get into. So if I go over the side or anything happens to me, then obviously no one would know for quite a period of time. You know, it's hard to guarantee a wage for a crew. If I go out and earn nothing for the day, then there's only, only me who's got to deal with that. That's fishing. You don't know what you're going to catch. You don't know what the weather's going to be like, how the, how the boat's going to behave. Um, you know, there, there is a bit of a challenge to it, and uh, it's nice to have a different challenge every day and uh, get to see all the different sort of birds that pass by with the seasons and different fish that arrive and go, sort of learn and be in harmony with nature, really. There's been too many fishermen lost, even this year in 2015, lost at sea already. Um, so it is a worry but um, we enjoy what we do and we love what we do so hopefully we'll continue to see the benefits of what we do and hopefully he'll come home safe to me and Alicia every day. I work hard, I want to be able to earn a living. I don't want to be in a position where I'm working hard and not, and not earning enough to survive. No one wants to be millionaires being a fisherman. If we wanted to be millionaires, we wouldn't have chose this career path. I do it because I enjoy being outside in the open. I enjoy the challenge of being able to get up and go out to see whatever the conditions are and uh, see what's what's available to be harvested. I, um, you know, I just want to be able to provide for my family. I don't think fishing is for everybody. Um... I think it takes a certain type of person to do it and I think it also takes a certain type of person to put up with it. He goes out in the snow and he goes out in 30, 40 mile an hour winds um, and I think for people to put up with that um, it has to be some kind of special person to be able to do it. What better job to be in than seeing the sunset like this on a beautiful day and uh, see the sunrise every morning. I don't, we don't do it for the money, we do it because we enjoy being out in the wild, we enjoy pitting our wits against the fish that we catch and we enjoy providing fresh fish for local people um, so that they can, they can enjoy what the sea has to offer. We're not um, butchering the resources that are here, we look after our fishery because we want it to continue into the future. The problem you've got is that if people carry on managing it the way that they are doing, it forces fishermen to fish for today and not for tomorrow. We don't want to do that. We want there to be a future.